a new day and welcome back to my channel. Today marks the beginning of fall days here on my channel if you are unfamiliar. It's basically my fall series that is going to be happening most of September and October and I'm a mom of three kids. It's hard to always make special moments but I feel like they're essential if you want to feel like a complete person you know or it's sometimes not even making special moments it's just noticing those special moments when they happen. And so I like to make sure I include, I include real life in my fall day videos, like 90% of it is real life. And then I like to also add some special touches here and there just to give you guys some inspiration and just to add some fun to my life as well. So you can look forward to that series here on my channel. And I thought we could start out fall days with just a life update, catch up. I'm also gonna take you throughout my week and show you some exciting things. Our one property is going on the market. I wanna show that to you all. School is starting this week, so I'm gonna vlog a little bit of the first day of school and put that in here. <sighs> Guys, I'm feeling all the feels. I just can't believe I have a kindergartner. Oh my goodness. Anyway, but we'll get to that in due time. First, I wanna make a smoothie bowl to sit down and eat. I'll make it with you guys and we'll see. We'll see how it is. I found the recipe on Pinterest and it just looked really delicious. And I was like, you know what? I have all those ingredients. Let's try it out. The recipe calls for almond butter. I don't have that either. So we're gonna improvise. I think we can still make it really delicious. So let's do that first. Okay, so the base of the smoothie just starts with half a frozen banana, and then it takes some pumpkin puree, not pumpkin pie filling, and sweet potato. And this is actually, I made this for baby food for my um, nine month old, and he went straight to real food. He doesn't eat pureed stuff, and there's already cinnamon in it, which gives it that color, so that'll be good in there. And then it calls for two tablespoons of peanut butter. I'm using this Biscoff cookie butter because I just ran out of my peanut butter yesterday. Half a cup of milk. And then the sweetener is actually two tablespoons of maple syrup, which I think is gonna give a nice fall touch. And I'm gonna pretty much lay low on the cinnamon because there was already cinnamon in the sweet potato. And then it says a fourth of a teaspoon nutmeg. We'll just sprinkle a little in there. Okay, it's not very thick, so I'm gonna add another half a banana. This is my grandma's candy dish, and I never use it, so I figured what a perfect time. It looks kind of fallish with the gold rim. Okay, now comes the fun part. <laughs> oh my goodness, I can't even. It is so beautiful. I'm not a smoothie girl, but I may have to become one. So basically what I ended up doing was topping it with some granola, coconut, pepitas, mini chocolate chips, bananas, and then I just drizzled some more. It's supposed to be almond butter, but I used cookie butter on top. These are chia seeds, some more banana. Yeah, it is just so pretty and a feast for the eyes as well as hopefully the tongue too, right? It's so pretty. Let's hope it's good. <laughs> okay, here it is. It's so beautiful. Oh my goodness, where do I dig in even? If I go down here, I will get, ooh, the cookie butter is nice and cold against the smoothie. There, I got chocolate chips, pepitas, granola, coconut. Okay, this has gotta be good. Wow, you have to like, really turn your brain on and like think about all the flavors there it's very very delicious there's like so many different flavors going on you have to like focus <laughs> on what you're actually tasting mmm oh man I was a little skeptical about the sweet potato I'm not gonna lie and you can taste it in here but it's actually really good it's like very sweet and like a little bit nut I don't know it's really delicious way to start fall days off with a bang go ahead and try this guys I will link it down below I did it exactly according to the directions, except I did add a full banana and I didn't have peanut butter. So the cookie butter is a nice touch. It really is. You might want to back off on the maple syrup a little if you don't want it overly sweet. Mm, okay, moving on. <laughs> so cooler weather is definitely coming around the corner here in Pennsylvania already. The days are pleasant. They're not as super hot and muggy as they were before. And I was definitely feeling inspired looking on Pinterest. I was seeing all kinds of cute outfits and I was starting to feel like I need to make a shopping list together. I need to go shopping for all the fall clothes. And then I'm like, wait a second. I have this closet, not full of clothes, but 
it has plenty of clothes in it. And I was like, I'm gonna challenge myself. So I pinned a whole bunch of inspiration and I challenged myself to come up with modest renditions of those outfits with the pieces that I already had. And I was so shocked with how many cute outfits I was able to construct with clothes that I already had. Okay, the first one is definitely a classic. You guys all got this in your wardrobe. Denim jacket, black dress. This is actually from my collection with Inherit Clothing Company. Check it out, they still have a few sizes, I believe. She's wearing sunglasses. I thought that it was super fun that we have similar looking sneakers, so I threw those on as well. It's not super memorable, but it's also super easy to throw on. I can definitely see myself slipping around doing the errand running or just general momming in this outfit. Okay, this one I would never have thought to put together, but I loved how she looked and I had all the pieces in my closet. Once I put it on, I absolutely love it. It feels very me, actually. Um, it's kind of like businesswoman with a touch of like personality. Got sneakers again. I wish I had blinding white sneakers like her, but I don't. But I still just put all this stuff out of my closet. Basic ribbed top. And yeah, you can do this with pretty much any printed skirt you have. And I love my blazer. It's thrifted from ThreadUp, but it's actually from H&M originally. Okay, she looks great in this picture. I wish I had a darker silk skirt, but I do have the silk skirt here, and I do love the color blocking. Do you guys notice we pretty much have the exact same cropped turtleneck? I don't know, I feel like I just don't have much shape. But overall, I love the concept, and I'm gonna keep my eyes open for maybe a thrifted silk pattern skirt, um, mini skirt. I think that could look great for fall. Okay, this trend I don't remember seeing other years, but it was all over Pinterest, and that is like a chunky sweater underneath a denim jacket. I think this is great for layering, especially for like cold nights at the fair or something. It's chilly and then it gets even colder, you can throw another layer on. I replicated her outfit pretty much to a T. I couldn't see what shoes she was wearing, so I threw on just some black boots. And she has on distressed denim jeans. And you'll notice here that the skirt is very fitted, but then the top is pretty bulky, so I kind of like that juxtaposition. I don't feel like I'm totally drowned. Um, and it still feels modest because the sweater is nice and baggy and long in the back. I really love this one, and I just love this color for fall. I feel like I will genuinely wear this outfit a lot. And what do you guys think? Denim on denim and not even the same color family? I kind of like it. Again with that layered sweater look, but this time with a flannel. And she has the blending white sneakers again, which I don't have, so instead of boo-hooing about it, I put them with these thrifted, I think they're actually originally from Target, just gray wedge sneakers. And I think it really looks cute together because if you can see really closely, there is some gray in the flannel. So I think it pulls together nicely. Um, I think I would recreate this outfit again with a less choky neckline. Still the brown, I love that. And she's wearing a really, really light denim. And I actually went the whole way to white. I love this look, this is very Megan. I love this neutral, but still kind of a color look. Yeah, I see myself wearing this a lot this fall. And don't worry about white, guys. You can wear white, even as a mom, just make sure it's white denim, because you can scrub, scrub it like crazy. Okay, very practical mom outfit here. Not the most inspirational, but very attainable for sure. I think we all have an oatmeal cardigan. I feel like her oversized one looks better, but this is what I have. And then I'm gonna add to my fall graphic tee collection. Like, I love how hers has like those fall colors in it, but this is one that I already have in my closet, and it kind of, it could really be for any season, honestly. And then just a denim skirt. And I couldn't see what shoes she was wearing, so I just put on some practical slip-ons. You know, I feel like I wear this type of outfit 24-7. It doesn't feel particularly fall to me, but I feel like if I get a new graphic tee or two that feel a little more fall, I'll definitely be recreating this one. And look, we even have the exact same bag, pretty much. Okay, again, this one I like even more than the last, and I feel like this is very easy components. I've showed before, this is more of a 90s acid wash denim, and then I love this color top. Along, It's a little too fitted to wear without something of a top, I feel. And then, again, distressed denim. Again, it feels very easy and kind of like you didn't think about it, but you still look really, really put together. I like this one. Okay, I was super skeptical of this outfit combination, but I had all the elements that she was wearing, so I decided to put it on, and I love it. The top especially feels so special with the like flare to it, and it has Swiss dots. And then she had it paired with just grungy denim, so I did the same thing, a light denim, and I actually love it. It feels super serviceable and like common everyday life, 
but a little bit more special. And she has on nude sandals, which I don't have, but you know, what's better for fall than boots? Better for the cooler weather anyway. And a backpack like she has. I don't know. I I am surprised with this one, guys. What do you think? Where would you wear an outfit like this, though? Is it more of like a coffee shop date night type of thing? Or would you just wear it out and about like a normal day? I don't know. Normally I wear this top to church and I don't wear it very often. And now that I found a way to style it in a little more of a casual way, I know I will be wearing it so much more. What a win, I love this one, surprising. Okay, hear me out, I know, I know, your guys are screaming, cream and white, what are you thinking? But I feel like this monochromatic look makes it all about the bag. This one is a genuine hand-stitched leather bag made right here in Lancaster County. It's available on my website. Plug, plug, plug. Honestly, they're beautiful. But anyway, yes, I feel very classy and sophisticated. I know she has a silk skirt on. This is just a cream denim. But it also looks good with flannel and a belt bag. Very much more casual. Honestly, I feel like I should wear this to the PTF meeting tonight, maybe minus the belt bag. <laughs> um, it feels very fall and very subtle, but also very, very put together. Like people aren't gonna necessarily think about your clothes. They're just gonna feel like you gave an effort. I think I learned from doing this experiment that I have a lot of pieces already. I really don't need to shop that much. By trying everything on, like you should see behind the camera, it is a royal mess. But I did this all in one shot. I tried everything on. I got some real inspiration. I feel like I have tons of clothes now, tons of options. Um, there was a few things that stood out to me though that I should shop for as I see sales or just keep my eyes open. And that is some white, blinding white sneakers. I feel like I would wear them all the time. I feel like I keep seeing that over and over again rather than the boots. And honestly, in my mom life, sneakers are just much more practical. The only thing is the white. So leave all your tips down below. My husband used to wear white sneakers as a teenager 24 seven and he said, magic eraser is all you need. So I don't know, let me know. Maybe I'll scotch guard them too, but I'll have to let you know and show you when I find some. Also, I love the inspiration here of this outfit. My question is, do they make a ribbed white dress that's not see-through and not like crazy bodycon? Because I feel like, okay, one, I would never wear this dress plain, so it wouldn't even need to have sleeves. You know, I'd be layering over it anyway, but I love this outfit. It feels so Megan. Honestly, those two pieces are the only thing I found myself wishing for. Oh, and a graphic tee or two. So anyway, how exciting. That was a great exercise, and now I have all kinds of inspiration in my phone, ready to go, and I'm just ready for the fall weather now. Bring it on. I highly recommend that challenge. In fact, go ahead and put it on Instagram, maybe in your stories. Tag me in it so I can see it and use this hashtag and we can just like all follow along on the fun. Honestly, that was the best afternoon ever. Anyway, okay, so I didn't talk about this a lot on here because it can feel a little, a little weird. I don't know, I don't like to talk too much about money. <laughs> I told Josh, I was like, I feel like I need to just publicly say how proud I am and how grateful I am that we were able to buy some real estate and it's all because of you guys. I'm so, yeah, it's, I feel like it's the next step in setting up our children's future and like with Josh's skill sets and stuff, it just makes sense. So this past year, we were able to buy a duplex. We first bought the first half from, it was a God thing really. The neighbor man had this tumble down duplex that he was trying to, he was trying to renovate and he ran out of time and gusto on it, you know, so he wanted to sell. So we bought that half last year. Josh started fixing it up. And over that time, he got to know the neighbors that lived in the other half of the duplex. And they're a super nice family. And they said they were looking to sell because they want to go find a bigger house. And they sold it to us. So they sold it to us in the spring and then just rented back to us while they kept looking for their own forever home, I guess, whatever you want to say. And so Josh just completed the renovations on the first half, which I'll show you in just a sec. And the second half that the other people are living in doesn't need any renovations at all and they have found their home. So they are going to be moving out in September and we can fill that half as well. So finally, finally, after putting a lot of money into that place, um, we can hopefully see some return on our investment and... Yeah, I'm just so excited. I'm not excited to be a landlady. Like I told Josh, I'm staying out of it. I don't want to deal with that stuff. But I am very excited to um, just see something tangible with our um, investments. And I don't know, it's just, 
it's a dream. It's a long-term dream that I put on vision board after vision board and been praying about and it's finally come to fruition and I just will feel so much better when it starts to make a return. So let me show you the progress on that. Okay, we're here at the apartment and the side that we're renovating, it looked like this. I've been making decisions, like I've been picking out fixture, light fixtures and like different things like that. All the details, it's very basic, I'm sure. But yeah, I have not seen it in like three months, so I am excited. Oh my goodness. It looks way bigger from those purple days. <laughs> oh my word, the kitchen! Wow, it does look good. Notice how we made sure the cabinets went to the ceiling. I don't care if this is a rental property, they gotta go to the ceiling. All that storage, perfect. What color is this called? Stone Harbor Gray. Yeah. Oh wow, Josh, I want a black sink. Do black sinks show dirt? Yes, they do a little bit, but they... I picked out the light fixture up there. It's a little farmhousey for my taste, but it's also pretty classic. I feel like you could do whatever you want with it. Yeah, just a real blank canvas. And the front door ended up being charcoal gray with matte black fixtures. Seriously, part of me would love to like actually design like an Airbnb like for cuteness and not for just like money purposes. Maybe someday, maybe someday, but we were trying to be smart with our spending because we want this house to give us a return. Oh, let's look at the bathroom. So this bathroom has matte black and gold in it. And also the vanity then has black and gold mixed. Oh my word, this basement actually feels livable, Josh. White paint and then carpet. There's nothing like carpet in a basement to make it feel a little less echoey and dungeony. Up the steps we go. More old school railing. And then here's the big normal bathroom. It has gold fixtures all through it. Um, and then matte black again, it kind of mixes it together. Um, yeah, I'm not a fan of this. I mean, I really love the sheen on it, um, but I'm not a fan of the pattern. Um, but it's all they had in stock and Josh wanted something ASAP. So that's what we went with. I love this light fixture here. You guys see it? Oh, I think that's beautiful. Medicine cabinet mirrors. Not really a style statement, but super functional when you have a small space and not a lot of storage. And then what? Are we just looking at empty box rooms here? So bedroom number one, bedroom number two, and the tiny little itty bitty, probably supposed to be a nursery room. <laughs> There's big spacious closets actually in here, even though it is a pretty small apartment. Yeah, I don't know, it's just a fresh space. Anyway, we already have some people interested and we haven't even listed it yet, but I just envision somebody coming in here and totally making it their own. Um, I would have loved to put more of my style in it, but it wouldn't have really came back in revenue, you know? And then I also think it's much more fun. Like, I kind of made it with my sister who's engaged, kind of with her in mind, like, bare bones, now you can make it how you how you want it. But yeah, for the most part, Josh, yeah, like I said, I haven't seen it in three months. I just picked out a few things. Um, but yeah, very clean, very new, and I'm excited to see who gets to live here. All the floors are done by Nault Floor Covering. Actually, Nault Floor Covering is doing, or they have done, our tile mm -hmm. in our bathroom, yep. and our bedroom flooring. Anyway, they're really good, nice guys to work with, and they're, this video is not sponsored by them or anything, but they gave me a discount code. I'm gonna put it down below. I think you get like 10% off if you go through them. So locals, if you are doing any renovations, check them out. Yeah, they're really, really nice guys. Yeah, yeah they do good work. They clean up right? after themselves, they show up on time, they, they work hard. They treated us really <laughs> well. I was extremely happy. And of so. course, they have a ton of options um, at like a lot of different price points. Our shower tile was really expensive, but then like the floor we put in here was some like mid-grade stuff, so yeah. Definitely check them out if you're gonna be doing any projects like this anytime soon. So yeah, it really is basic. We did consider airbnb being it, but we just decided we'd rather have a steady check that comes in. I not have to worry about bookings and finding somebody to clean it and all that stuff because I really don't have any more time on my hands. So just some quick family updates. My brother right below me, they just had their third baby and it's a boy. Another boy, Ivani has one girl cousin between both sides. I think she has like seven boy cousins and one girl cousin. So it was another boy, which is great. It doesn't matter. It's wonderful. It's a friend and a playmate for Miller and his other cousin. It's going to be three musketeers. Hudson, Miller, and <laughs> Emerson are just going to be, yeah, it's going to be so cute. Also, my sister, who is 10 years younger than me, 
If you don't know my family, I'm the oldest and there's five of us. I have a sister who's five years younger me, than me, a sister that's 10 years younger than me, and then a sister that's 15 years younger than me. Um, so yeah, my mom had us pretty spaced out, but the sister that's 10 years younger than me, she's 20, is going to be getting married this winter and I'm so excited for her. It's just so fun having a wedding in the family and she actually asked me to be a bridesmaid, which is such an honor and I'm so excited about it. Congratulations, Janan and Kyle. Of course, with late summer into fall, I feel like all we do is lots of canning and I have yet to, I'm gonna show you guys in an upcoming video, I went to can pepper jelly and peaches and anyway, I plan to do that soon, but I've already canned salsa, not by myself, but with my mom-in-law and sister-in-law, and I will see if I can get the recipe. Um, it's actually from my one friend, and we kind of adapted it over the years to be for our heat. I would say it's like a medium spicy. Like my kids think it's a little too spicy, but pretty much everybody else that has it doesn't say it's too hot. Um, and it has that brown sugar in it, so maybe it's not the most healthy, but that sweet heat is just so good, and I got all those jars for a little bit over a dollar a pint, which is a crazy good deal. I always joke and say that um, canning, you can for flavor, not for price, because for a lot of things like canning your own peaches and stuff, you cannot do it as cheaply as you can buy them in the store, but they also don't taste half as good. Same with corn, frozen corn. We had a corn day with my mom and dad too, um, and we hadn't done that ever before. It was so fun, like everybody doing all the different chores and jobs and everything. Also, Ivani is going back to school and I'm feeling so, I'm so excited for her. Like I'm so excited to be a school mom and then I'm also so like sad that that period of preschool momming life is officially over. But I am really glad that with the kindergarten schedule, she's only going three days a week. She does go though, she's leaving the house at like 7.30 and gets home at like 3.30, so it's pretty long days. I have to tell you, like homeschooling has been looking kind of appealing. <laughs> but honestly, we feel complete peace about what we're doing this year, and yeah, I'm just really excited for her. ago I'm officially a school mom <laughs> she was not one bit scared not one bit she has like the confidence of a queen it's crazy anyway <laughs> um, I didn't cry at all we'll see um, I thought I would um, I feel a little emotional but like I'm more excited for her than anything I don't think it really hit me but yeah I hope she keeps her excitement for school for the most part I know I did I used to sit on the sofa on snow days and cry and wish we had school <laughs> I didn't want to stay home so anyway I think she'll be probably be one of those kids that really looks forward to her school days but yeah this year it's only three days a week so that's gentle on Ivani and on her mom so that's nice I'm taking your picture and you're taking mine <laughs> I was taking Miller. Get the puppy. Get the puppy. I was taking a picture of Miller. Oh. My Fletcher was very bummed this morning when I told him Ivani was gone already. Yeah, he keeps saying he wants to go to school and he wants to see that on the bus. He was very grouchy at first. Um, but now him and Miller are playing like best buds and it's so cute. Fletcher always played really good by himself. Like he would opt out of Ivani's games sometimes and just play by himself for a good long while. So I think they'll figure it out. Today's only a half day. So, I mean, it's really not gonna be that tough and I'm gonna keep him busy too. Oh, tackle to mama. Tackle to mama. Cause it's supposed to fly. Yeah. on the top of it. Good job. Can you write an F at the top of your paper for Fletcher? Okay, I'm going to give Fletcher a job to do to keep him occupied. He's going to do some pepper chopping. I'm making pepper jelly today. Um, yeah, that way he has something to do. Miller's down for his nap and it's just me and my little buddy. Right? 
Like that little, like that little block. Now Good job. Yep, right like that. Little tiny cubes. Yepers. Wow, you're such a good, careful cutter. I think it's safe to say that Fletcher is missing his sister now that Miller's down for a nap. We are canning, and he keeps saying every time the lid whistles, he's like, that's Vonnie whistling from school. <laughs> Waiting for the bus. Shandon up in the back there. There's Shandon. She's waving. Say hi. Wanna get a hug? Oh, did you have fun? Yeah. Did you miss us? No. Yeah. We missed you. You are beaming. Did you have fun? Do you think you're gonna like school? Yeah. I want to hear all of that. Excuse me. Are you all tired out? So, was it a good day? Do you want to go back again? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> he missed you so much. Oh. Are you glad she's home again? Come back for me. The school bus should come back for you. No. <laughs> so this has not really ever happened before that I can remember. I've taken some girls trips, but Josh actually took a guy's trip. They went golfing in like Northern Pennsylvania, Northwestern Pennsylvania, I think, Poconos area, I believe. It was like a two day, one night thing. But yeah, I think he did have a ton of fun. And yes, we missed him, but I think it was good for him to get away and relax a little bit. But now it got me dreaming. Hmm, I need a little girl's trip too. Where could I go? What, who do I want to go see, you know? But our 10 year anniversary is coming up next year, so we'll probably do a trip for that. Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> I just, I'm always dreaming about the next, the next vacation, right? <laughs> Are we all? This summer we had some vehicle trouble. I didn't really talk about it on here too much, but it was actually very frustrating. We had to take our van. We have a Chrysler, Chrysler Pacifica, and Josh had to take it to the dealer because the transmission was clunking, which if you know anything about vehicles, that's scary. And the air conditioner in the back didn't work. Oh my goodness, I drove my friends to Hershey for a birthday celebration for some of our friends. It was towards the beginning of June and it was a hot day and the air conditioner only worked in the front. It was miserable. Anyway, I was so embarrassed, but what are you gonna do? So Josh takes it off to the Chrysler dealer and they couldn't look at it and finally they did and they sent it back to us and we drove it down the road. The air conditioner didn't work and the transmission clunked at the very first red light. Like it, it like, to ch like changes, I don't know, it's weird. As you're trying to go, it feels like it's gonna stall off right in the middle of an intersection as you take off. Yeah, kind of scary. Anyway, so Josh was like, what is this? So he calls them back up. He's like, you've had our vehicle for an entire week. Nothing has changed, what's going on? We, I had been driving Josh's work truck around everywhere. It was not fun because the kids can't get in or out. It's a huge beast, you know? And so they took it back. After that, the guy calls us and tells us that our bill is gonna be $2,200 for something that they never even fixed. And Josh is like, I'm sorry, no. <laughs> like, no, that nothing got fixed. I'm not sure how it's our fault. Anyway, it was, we were trying to be nice about it, but at the same time, we needed some results. And they're like, oh yeah, well, we'll have to wait till the technician, the special guy can look at it and get it right this time. And he didn't look at it for like probably two weeks. And then when he did, he had to order a part you guessed it. Finally, the part, which took another two weeks to come in, came, and it was the wrong part. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up, guys. Anyway, I know it's not, like, just our problem, and I'm not here to just vent and be grouchy. I know it's, I can share it because it really is a trivial matter. I'm not, like, heartbroken over it or anything. It all resolved itself over time. I know it's frustrating for the dealers, too, I'm sure. But anyway, there was just a combination of, like, the world we live in and also oversight from people who don't seem to care too much about their job. But Anyway, so we did not have a vehicle for most of June, all of July, and most of August. Finally, he's like, look, we need the work truck back. We have got to get a rental vehicle because they couldn't get a rental vehicle. Nobody can get rental vehicles right now, you know? Um, and so they wouldn't give it to us. They wouldn't give it to us. And I don't know what Josh finally did. I think he just went in and sat there and said, look, we need a rental vehicle. I'm going to sit here until you find one, <laughs> which is very unlike Josh. He's very like, I wish he would be a little more mean sometimes. But anyway, I guess they, he got the point across and... They got us this little crossover vehicle that actually worked out really good. We had it for like two or three weeks. The only thing was I realized I do miss my minivan. It is somewhat life-changing because the sliding doors, like uh, so stressful. Every time I pulled into a parking spot, I would have to go around and open the doors for the kids because I was not gonna risk them dinging somebody else's car. Anyway, we have our minivan back. We're good to go. It felt so good to organize it for fall and get it ready for um, the ball tournaments coming up and stuff like that. So. Oh, I'm so glad to have Harriet the Chariot back in the garage again after a very long saga this summer. And I guess I have to admit 
even though I was kind of a skeptic, minivans are kind of life changing. So I was looking over my vision board that I make every New Year's and I was just like trying to see what I haven't done yet and like what I want to keep working on, what are some things that need to get done. And one of those things was my devotions and um, I've actually been doing something new lately. I've been really consistent with it for the last couple weeks and I've gotten so much out of it. Last year I read through the Bible in a year. This year I'm kind of doing it a little slower. I'm just like taking passages and um, studying them a little more deeply. But I decided that I was not being as consistent as I wanted to be. So I decided to delve into First and Second Timothy and First and Second Peter using the soap method. And so right now the weather is so beautiful. I'll get up in the morning and sit out on the porch with my notebook and my Bible and a pen. And I'm using the soap method. I had so many of you over on Instagram asking me what that actually entails. So I'll give you just like a quick brief synopsis of what the soap method is in case you'd like to try it. Basically, S stands for scripture, so I just write down the passage that I'm reading that day. O is for observations. I'll write down any observations, maybe paraphrase one verse or something. I, I kind of focus in on one verse. I don't look at the whole entire chapter. Trust me, when you have First and Second Peter and First and Second Timothy, it is so rich, so full of so much. You could spend all week on one chapter, I'm sure, if you wanted to. But anyway, so observations, and then A is applications. So there I try to think, like, put the Bible into shoe leather. How can I live it out? How does that apply to me today? Not next month or next week, but today. And like, it's just amazing how I feel like doing that part there just makes the Bible feel like it's speaking to me. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's been life changing. And then the P is prayer. And I just write down a little prayer, which I never prayer journaled before, like actually wrote out a prayer. But since I don't have high expectations, like they're just short, short prayers. Um, I've really been enjoying it and it just keeps my thoughts from wandering and I get to sit on the front porch in the beautiful weather. Um, yeah, it's just really, the Bible has really been speaking to me lately so I just wanted to pass that method on to you because it seemed like most of you hadn't heard of it before. So try the soap method out and when you sit in the porch in the mornings and do that, you can think about me who's probably doing the same exact thing at the same exact time and we can just feel like sisters because we are, I guess, sisters in Christ, right? <laughs> Okay, so the last thing that I wanted to include in this video was my full bucket list. I will put it up here on the screen. I will let that be an inspiration for you if you'd like to make a fall bucket list with your family. I just know that fall, fall is my favorite season, can you tell? <laughs> no kidding, right? Um, but I just know that fall can completely slip away if we let um, too many thoughts of like Christmas coming up or just like the busyness of momming. It really is just so busy. I just know that if you're not intentional, it can just get away from you. So I like to make a list every year and it's not a to-do list. It is not a to-do list, but it's more of like a ta-da list. If we get to do something on it, it's like ta-da, yay, that was awesome. I just find it's the best way to experience like the fullness and fun of fall. Um, because it might seem like a long time, but fall is very short and it'll soon be over and then we'll be on to winter things. And so I like to, yeah, make a little bucket list every year and just have some ideas of things they can do. And you know, my bucket list is going to probably look completely different from yours. If you don't have children my age, that is fine. Some of these things are things that I want to do for myself personally. Some things are things that, you know, I'm going to do with my kids. So yes, I feel like September 1st, if you're watching this video, the day it comes out, it's a fresh start, a new beginning to a new season. I challenge you to be intentional. If you haven't been great with having devotional time, if you're a Christian, maybe now is a good time to implement a new plan. Make that bucket list for fall, whatever area you live in. It might look, make it look a little bit different. Let me know down below. Do you have fall? Or are you going to live vicariously through me with my fall day videos? <laughs> I, that's why I make them, right? And yeah, just thank you guys so much for being here. I'll see you in the next one. Bye everyone. Happy fall days.